What's happening? What is up? How's it hanging? Nope, can't say that. I can't. I got a bum back. It's hanging to the left. Short, shrivel, and slightly to the left. Yep. Um, what is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, SMKW.com, and I've got Greg right here. We're bringing you Knife Show 25. 20, 25. <laughs> So we've got a lot of cool new stuff uh, on the table. Um, we got a lot of things going on. All, all traditional folders today. Right. Uh, so we mixed it up a little bit better this time around. Um, no, you guys love traditional folders, as do I. And we do have some on the table. Um, but we do have a lot of fixed blades this time around. And stuff that um, apart. Yes. On purpose. Uh, y- yes. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I actually don't have your microphone up, so. <laughs> There we go. He's had me on mute this entire time. <laughs> no wonder he said he liked me better today than he ever has. Didn't want you to talk. Um, all right. Now, before we get started, though, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell so you will know. Yes, you. I called you out before in the other two videos, the spew and the jack, you, yeah, you with the Cheeto fingers, yeah, go ahead and wipe those off, lick them off, whatever you have to do, and ring that notification bell so you will know when we bring you new knife shows and new knives. Now, without further ado, let's, I can't get to the button, let's, let's he light it up. so hard, <laughs> so hard he tried. <laughs> So, uh, we've got a ton of new knives to show you, um, and some really cool new stuff, uh, and some stuff that we've had for a while that we just kind of wanted to feature, um, because we haven't yet on the channel. So, um, let's dive right in. We've got some new stuff from our in-house brands that we're really excited yes. to bring you. We had to go steal these um, off Tony's desk. Yes. Uh, so, thank goodness for Tony Watkins, um, because I would, I would be, uh, I would be lost. Um. First off, let's go straight with the uh, triple R right here. R R R. The R R R. Oh, six there. Um, so this one's in the denim micarta. This mm. is the Coperhead. The what? The Coperhead. Now, why is it now a Coperhead? I want to. I want to clarify that with everyone because I know, and I think we've already gotten some that think that it's misspelled on the website. <gasps> People on the internet think we get things wrong? Yeah. And, and they would be right. We get things wrong a lot. Let us know. <laughs> we do, but this is not one of them. Um, so nope. this is a Coperhead. Because of? The blade. It is a coping blade in a Copperhead form. So we're calling this a Coperhead. Let's take a look at that one up close. Because we're punny. <laughs> we are very punny. So uh, this one's coming in. Of course, D2 tool steel on the blade, on that coping blade. Um, blue denim micarta on the handles. 1.75 inches length on that blade right there. Match strike pulls. Half stops the handles are the uh, blue denim micarta with brass liners, stainless steel bolsters, nickel silver pins, and, of course, the arrowhead shield. And uh, there's even a hidden little lanyard post right there. Now, it's going to take um, like some of the really, really, really small cord to get in there, but you, you, it's possible. Well, Brian stopped by the other day, and he suggested dental floss. <laughs> dental floss. <laughs> I mean, it is a smaller one, but once you get it in there... That's what she said! <laughs> if you're somebody like TC that likes doing your own lanyards, making your own lanyard posts, things like uh, lanyard carriers, it'd be a great one. A great little yeah. fifth pocket knife. It'd be a great little Sunday go-to-meet knife. You ain't going to scare nobody with that one. More than likely, you're going to have people go, it's so tiny, but mighty. It's small. I like it. Now, for me, this one is a fruit knife. This is a pocket pairing knife for me. Um, that's what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to use it for cutting up apples when I go to eat them, um, maybe peeling fruit, something like that. If you ever um, encounter a little bit of whittling, eating an apple off of a knife, you should take any advice he gives you. But I can see that one being a, a fruit blade. I can see it being a small whittler, getting some yeah. details done on it. I love the swedging at the top of the blade. Yeah. It gives it that little bit of extra. And just seeing the light glint off of it, I love that. All of them in the reserve and line have been really, really awesome. And I'm looking forward to what comes out of all the next one. Uh, he's going to do the snap. 
That's the half stop. Okay, it's so small they couldn't see it behind your microphone. Yeah. But I still, yeah, it still works. Um, so, yeah, that one's coming in at thirty nine ninety nine. Thirty nine. That's 99. a great deal. I, I think I'm going to have to take this one home with me. It's been up here so long I thought you'd already bought it. No, I haven't. But I might have to. Um, You've played with it enough. I'm pretty sure that one is yours now, <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> now, in keeping with the um, house brands, uh, we've got a couple of new Queen mm-hmm. fixed blade knives. You're gonna yeah. Go some, yeah. Left or right? Left or right? Where are you going We're going one? with this one. Oh, the Bird like and Trout. I like that one. Um, so these are really cool. They're coming in with really, really nice leather sheaths mm-hmm. with the logo on them. Let's go ahead and take a look at that sheath up close right there. The attention to detail on that stamp on that sheath is very nice. Yeah. I mean, and this is just a classic design um, that you... It, it really takes me back to like the old school fixed blade knives mm-hmm. and how they were presented in their sheaths back in the day. Um, and this is going to be a fantastic little bird and trout knife. Winter bottom bone on the handles. And um, we've had a few people asking about that. Uh, this might not look like the the winter bottom that certain people recall from the later years of winter bottom. Um, what we really wanted to do with the winter bottom bone on the queen knives is go back and really uh, make it reminiscent of the old winter bottom mm-hmm. bone from the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, and the beginning of queen knives. <clears throat> and that's really what we tried to do with this. Um, so if you go back and you can find uh, actual pictures of the original winter bottom bone. Um, from back in the day, that's that's going to be what you're going to find there. This one's going to be a uh, 2.75 inch stainless steel clip point blade with the mirror polish finish, and of course it has the uh, queen steel uh, on the blade right there. Um, these are going to be uh, steel bolsters on this one, and this one actually fits in the hand really nice, and is going to make a great little bird and trout knife. Uh, it's six inches overall, weighs in at just 3.7 ounces, comes with the leather sheath, and it fits nicely down in there. And it really does have the that. drain hole in the bottom of it. So if you are yes. using that one out in the field, if you're using it for fish, trout, anything like that, you do have that in there. Always clean your blades once you get home, put oil on yeah. them, everything like that. But while you're out in the field, you've not got all of it in the sheath there. With that, It does have that drain hole, which will help you yeah. out. And if that one's a little too small for you, we've also got... That fits all the fish I catch. What are you talking about? The, the fixed blade here. Um, winter bottom bone as well. A little bit larger. Doesn't have the rear bolster. This one's going to be a fixed blade. Um, so let's take a look at that one right there. Um, so this thing's really cool. I, I'm really digging this winter bottom bone. And uh, this one's coming in with 440C on the blade steel. Nice clip point blade. And like I said before, you'll see the queen steel on the blade right there. Um, really fantastic job on the handles. And I tell you what, we, uh, I talked with Josh about this. We, we went back and forth for a long time on getting these handles just right and just how we wanted them. And like I said before, going back to the old school winter bottom, mm-hmm. um, from back in the day. Ain't no school like the old school. That's right. And, um, these are really good. This one's coming in, um, with the leather sheath as well, with the logo right there on it. Um, fits down in there. Nice. And uh, this is also going to be ambi, so this is going to fit either way. You can actually turn it over, and it fits down in there just as well left-handed. Um, so that's going to be a great option for uh, whether you're left-handed or right-handed right there. Really whether, dig that one. Or if you're carrying multiple knives, that way you can yeah. have uh, one on one side, one on the other. That works out really well. So that one's coming in at twenty nine ninety nine. The uh, bird and trout is coming. Bird and trout is coming in at twenty four ninety nine. So. Fantastic deal on uh, on great fixed blades right there. I love it whenever they say some of the new stuff is coming in from Rough Rider, from Queen, from Marbles. Because I know it's going to be quality. I know it's going to be something different. I know it's going to be traditional and have aspects of when the companies first came out. Because yeah. that really matters to Kevin. That really matters to Brian and, yeah. and, and to Tyler. Uh, and they take a lot of attention to detail on all of that. And I like yeah. that. I really do. It, well, and I mean, it's such a tight-knit community. And then being able to actually pay tribute to um, the companies is uh, something that's very important, oh, I yes. think, um, in, in remembering. It's kind of like, so there was a line that I wrote for a show that I was in several years ago. 
Um, you can't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's true in a lot of different ways, especially when it comes to knife design. You can't know where you're going unless you can look back and see where you've been and see the designs that have already well, been made. Every new knife that comes out, the Rie Exo is an excellent example of that. We we have a very innovative design that people our age and younger are not used to, but it ha- draws influence from a earlier design, pays homage to that while making it its own. And that's what we get out of yeah. all of these knives. It's one of those we can walk by and go, oh, those people liked this knife and these people were inspired by this. And it is so awesome to see that progression of everything going down through there. Let's uh, let's keep on a truck in. Well, we've got a <clears throat> exclusive coming up. I'm so this one just dropped. Um, it actually, as of the taping of this, um, it hasn't dropped yet. But it, as of the airing of this, it has just dropped. And this is our brand new CRKT SMKW exclusive. That's a lot of letters. That's a lot of letters. I Spew. love them. I SPEW. I love cricket knives. It, good grief. So CRKT SPEW SMKW exclusive. This is an Allen Foltz design. And uh, this one's coming in with D2 on the blade mm-hmm. steel. Um, and then got that nice coated finish. Let's take a look at that one up close. Now, we just released a video earlier this week featuring this knife. Uh, not going to go into too much detail, but, um, I mean, this is a fantastic knife. Three-inch D2 tool steel blade, full tang fixed blade. Got the green G10 handles with the gold hardware on the handles right there. Um, nice coated blade, super sharp. Um, and S. The, this is the spew, so small pocket everyday worn cliff. Um, so uh, a little horny. To, I knew um, he was gonna do it. I knew <laughs> it. <laughs> and uh, coming in with the uh, GRN uh, sheath right there, you can wear this as a neck knife. It also comes with the uh, belt clip, and uh, I really dig. It. So one of my favorite things has been the smaller EDC fixed blades. Oh yeah, um, and. That's typically lately been uh, because I usually carry an EDC fixed blade mm-hmm. and a folder. And lately, most of what I've been using for just about every task has been my fixed blade just because it's easy. I just reach back, grab it, and it's ready to go. Um, so that's been the one that I've been mm-hmm. at. Like, yes, I carry both, but what I use the most is going to be my fixed blade. Both. I have seen very rarely you don't carry at least four or five knives. I have seen pictures, <laughs> have seen the pictures of you going to the pool in your swimming trunks with at least four knives on you. But now you've got the farm now, so a little fixed <clears> blade <throat> around the farm. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, cutting open bags, uh, unbailing stuff. There is a ton of stuff. I I keep a fixed blade on me at all times whenever I'm on the farm. Yeah. Uh, normally keep a machete on me as well at the farm, but that's an entirely different thing. Uh, and around the office, I find myself using the folders, the pocket ones, and everything like that. I thought so, you were about to say using the machete. What? <laughs> well, we do we do have some upper management meetings later. I could take a machete with that. That could work out real well in my yeah. favor. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Um, now, this this next one is one that's been out for a while, um, but we've never actually featured it. And, I haven't um, seen it till today. Yeah. It, so this is a phenomenal deal, and uh, I've been I've been meaning to do something with this. Um, so we carry Spartan blades. Mm-hmm. And um, knives. incredible knives, and this is an incredible value right here. This is the uh, Talos right here in the green. We've also got it in black, um, and we're going to take a look at this one up close. So this is a liner lock, Spartan Blades Talos green, features a 3.12 inch CTS XHP steel drop point blade with the tumble finish. Uh, now this one is a manual flipper with ambi thumb studs on it, and uh, this has got the uh, olive green textured G10 handles, um, reversible pocket clip. It looks like. No, no, no one way pocket. One way pocket. Clip. One way pocket clip. Oh, it is a deep carry pocket clip. I do like the deep carry. Um, but we're talking coming in at one fifteen for um, a Spartan blades with CTS XHP blade steel. Uh, that's a phenomenal deal. And uh, it's 3.88 inches closed, weighs just 2.33 ounces. And this is going to be an incredible um, just everyday carry knife right here. Uh, and great build quality. That's that's what you're going to find with Spartan Blades anyways. When we were taking a look at these downstairs, um, it fits my hand really well. And I got big meaty paws too. Uh, I was able to get a really good grip on it, hold it really well in hand. Uh, and for 115 
That yeah. is a great deal for a Spartan Blade. If you've never held one in your hand, if you've never got one, that is a great place to start with them and a great budget for them. Yeah. So really digging that one. And I've uh, been hanging around you too long. I'm starting to say one fifteen on is a budget on a knife. What is wrong with me? Oh. <laughs> I, I for uh, for nice, you know, premium blade steel. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think you can consider that. It's um, especially in this. I mean, when we're looking at. Of course, we get used to seeing knives now, uh, you know, in the three, four, five, six hundred dollar yeah. range. Never forget, we have to put these back on the floor so you guys can have them. We don't get to keep these, unfortunately. <laughs> right. But, uh, but we do put them back that way that they can go to new homes and help you all out with doing jobs and tasks and uh, uh, helping to build up your collections even more. Yeah. And, and now, are we going American Made? Yes. I like this one. So, um, a lot of people have been really excited to see the vault pattern this year. And uh, this one's super cool. So this is a really neat little vault pattern right here. Small swell center jack. And this one's in the brown burlap micarta 1095 carbon steel. So um, let's take a look at this one up close right here. Um, welcome back, Jack, for this year, 2022. And um, this one from Case is uh, a really, really cool little folder. Um, that was a half stop right there. I was not expecting that. Um, so yeah, half stop right there on that one. Has that been on all the swell, on the swell uh, You know, I'm not sure. That's a half stop on that blade as well. Um, so this one's coming in, like I said, with the uh, 1095 carbon steel uh, on the blade steel. And uh, so as a result, it's also going to come in the white carbon steel box right mm -hmm. there. Um, also got the case double X. Uh, the carbon double X, excuse me, oval shield right there. Um, and this one with the brown burlap micarta. Uh, mirror polish finish on the blade. Oh, here. absolutely, yeah. Um, made right there in Bradford, Pennsylvania. Clip point blade, pin blade. And uh, this is going to be a great little EDC knife. Um, a great little classic slip joint knife oh, yeah. um what what you know and love from case what you come to expect from case and i'm really loving their carbon series uh put a little bit of oil on there each day take care of it you know and you, that will last you through generations gotta do the sound test that's so nice that's that's very satisfying um great blade centering that one just, it, it looks fantastic. Between, between you and the ASMR for knives and Isaac sniffing the knives around here. The, yep. We got all of them. <clears throat> so that one's coming in. I, we don't actually, so as of the filming of this, we don't have this one online yet. It's going to be online. I got, I got a call in to Al. Okay. It'll be okay. It'll uh, be okay. I want to say it's either 62 or 68. Um, somewhere I around in there. I ain't saying nothing. So, yeah, if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. It's your fault. 62 or 68, somewhere in there. I said um, that. So, great little deal for a nice little uh, American-made um, traditional folder right there. And in keeping with the American-made, and uh, one of my favorite knives, one of my favorite people uh, in the knife industry um, over the last couple of years has been Andrew Demko. Oh, one of the... He is a... LT Wright mixed with a Joe Flowers. He's that nice and that hyper all in one box. And it, it, it was and great. A consummate professional. And Very much so. This one is, uh, I believe we picked up uh, a few of these from Blade Show from him. Um, this is the AD 20.5 in the Horncliffe mm -hmm. with the orange on the handles right there. And that's with the black DLC coated blade. So yeah, let's take a look at that coming. one. That's right. Oh, this would be a perfect Halloween knife. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell you what, with that Warncliffe blade, this kind of looks like a car. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Um, anyways, so we're talking uh, black DLC coating on that Austin A blade steel, um, the orange handles, and of course we're talking about that very fizzy shark lock right there. Um, it flicks out. It reverse flicks really easy. Um, you can also flick it with just the lock. Um, the first so, time watching you do that, I thought you had broke the knife. I had to <laughs> I really did. I, I mean, just... This is the real reason that the media department is completely separate from everybody else because he sits around and fidgets with knives more than anyone else in the building. And, um, I mean, just you can slow roll it out there. Mm -hmm. um, you can flick it out there. You can flick it that way. 
There's, I mean, so many different. I mean, this is one of the most fidgety knives I've ever held. Oh, it it um, absolutely is in the most fidget category. Yeah, and also there's so many options um, now with how popular this knife has been over the last year uh, for different handle scales. Mm-hmm. Um, Isaac got some while we were at uh, Blade Show, and made uh, you put them on going down the road in the car. Yeah, because he's not mechanically inclined whatsoever anyways um bless his heart but really cool knife coming in at 149 um and that's going to be you know the same price for all of the uh, demco 80 20.5s so uh that's a that's a great knife right there and folks whenever you see these go up online they do not last long it's, right it's one of those if you're going i'll pick it up next week i'll pick it up next month no you saw it before somebody else did if it says add to cart you better do it then otherwise it is going to be gone yeah yeah so that's all of our new knives that we have yes. to feature um now we got to get into our picks our picks yay <laughs> You're going first. Am I going first? <laughs> All right. So, budget picks. Budget pick. Um, I'll go first. You go first. My budget pick for this week, and um, this is one of my favorite EDC knives. Um, whether you're carrying it on a keychain, doesn't matter how, really. Mm-hmm. Um, fifth pocket carry. Uh, the usefulness of this knife cannot be overstated. Um, and that's a uh, classic SD from Victorinox. Uh, this one in particular is the Chocolate Fudge. Which he, he stood down there and looked through every color, and that was what he was feeling today. Yep. Chocolate Fudge. So let's take a look at that. Um, I like the color. I like the translucent scales. Um, so classic SDs coming in with the pin blade. Also got the um, flathead screwdriver nail file right there. Also, and this is this is my favorite aspect of it, and everybody knows because I talk about it ad nauseum, mm-hmm. is the scissors. You, I, I cannot tell you how functional and how useful scissors are to have until you have them and use them, and then you won't ever want to go back. Um, and one thing that's uh, interesting to note, too, uh, we've also got, uh, and this is something that has been uh, has become more important to me. We've also got the nail clip 580s, mm-hmm. um, which are TSA compliant because you've got the scissors and then you've got the nail clippers. You just don't have the actual knife blade. So um, if you're looking for something TSA compliant, you can go that route. Um, if you're in a plane a lot, stuff like that, going through airports. Um, and the, then I keep a 580 in my tackle box. Oh, yeah. I've always got a knife on me, uh-huh. but I may not always have nail clippers on me. Exactly. And I use that a ton whenever I'm trimming off mm-hmm. or anything else. And yep. like you said, for scissors and that, you even got Ethan Becker to say that scissors are important, that he loves cutting with them. Yeah. And you've also got, of course, the uh, toothpick right there and the tweezers. The, mo- um, the most important part of that is they now sell replacements for those. Yes. You can get yes. those because when we were kids, you lost that. It was done. It was done. It yeah. was done. It was mm, no coming back. So um, that one's coming in in 1999, as are all of the um, plastic handled Victorinox. Mm, uh, now, for the, for the ALOX ones, you step up to twenty nine ninety nine, um, which I think is a, is a worthwhile still investment. A, still a great um, deal. Still a phenomenal deal. But. For the traditional plastic handles, nineteen ninety nine, you can't beat that, and that's going to be super functional. We do functional. have them in red down there as well. Yes, and the classic red, and with the plastic handles, they work great for uh, having an extra around, having an extra in your car, giving them for a present, anything yep. else like that. And if if you're giving a knife to somebody that is not a knife person, that is a knife to start with. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's, it really is. Yeah, very non threatening. Yeah. Now to go in a completely opposite direction. Last week we had the Mercury uh, and MKM. Uh, no, this Mercury, uh, Voyagers and Rovers yeah, in. Yeah. This is one of the ones from my childhood. Number one, we've got a sheath. Number two, we have a K bar spoon. We have the. F- oh, which one? I was going the wrong direction. I got the fork, and then I have the knife. And what I love about this one is all three pop apart in the K bar classic hobo. Yes. And I don't think this has ever happened before. We tied. 
We tied? 1999. Wow. I love this thing because it has all three sections. They pop apart. That way you can have any combination that you need. So let's show on camera. I'm going to show no, how they uh, how they go together here. I'm going to close that blade up. I can't blame you. Um, While you're doing that, it says, from K-Bar themselves, portable fork, knife, and spoon with nylon carry case is designed for on-the-go or outdoor dining. All three utensils slot apart and back together for an all-in-one dining kit. Just toss in a backpack or glove compartment. I love that they even go, throw in the glove compartment. Use it when you need it. This right. Is, this is an extra. This is something that's going to help out. And for that price... It, also got the bottle opener, It too. does have the bottle opener. They slide together very easy. They slide apart really easy. And uh, many of us carry multi-tools that are much thicker and heavier than that. Oh, yeah. And each, uh, like, you can actually use this with it put together, too. Oh, yeah. Like, it, you don't have to take it apart a, for it to be usable. A, it's still a great K-Bar lockback knife. Yeah. If, you, if you're just eating ramen, if you're just eating the SpaghettiOs, you know, whatever. And don't, don't you judge me. We've all eaten SpaghettiOs out of the can. We've done that before. The camping did not go well. It was raining. I'm sorry. I couldn't predict the weather. <laughs> but just having the spoon on there where you can take it, pop it out, eat, and then be on the go, that's a great one for yeah. on the trail bag for absolutely anything. And I really like the sheath on this one because you have the wide part of it back here. If I could do it. That you can put on a full-size strap of whatever kind. And then they've also got a smaller one. For, for a your, smaller belt. For a smaller yeah. belt or whatever else like that. So it's not adjustable, but that they give you the right. forethought on that. All mm -hmm. for under 20 bucks. It's a that's, great deal. That's phenomenal. I like yeah. it. I like that a lot. All right. And we tied. I still don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> now, on to mid-range picks. Mid-range picks. So mine is very interesting. And the reason why I chose this is we were talking about how much I love EDCing a fixed blade now. Mm -hmm. um, this one's a little bit different. And the reason why I chose this is I want to get other people's opinion on this one. Um, and he doesn't care about my opinion, so he wants yours. So this one is the Boker Plus Wild VI. Is that actually how that pronounces that, or is that did you just take a guess at it? Well, I just said the letters. I'm assuming it's probably... Yovi. <laughs> I'm assuming it's probably Roman numerals. Um, That's all Greek to me. Jeez. All right. So I chose the Boker Plus YLVI. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is going to be an EDC-style fixed blade um, that's a little bit different. So you'll see it's got the Kydex sheath right there. Um, and it's got the drain hole on the sheath. I'm going to show that up close right there. Mm -hmm. Got the drain hole right there. Also comes with the uh, ball chain. Oh, we know how you love a neck knife. Um, so you can you can carry this as a neck knife. But you'll notice also it does have a pocket clip here, but it's on the knife itself, not on the sheath, which is interesting and different, um, which a lot of people are going to pocket carry fixed blades. Um, and I also like, and a lot of people aren't going to, but I love the blade to handle ratio on this one. I can see it because you're going to get a lot of force out of that in such a short blade. And it's got a chunky and back look at the spine. Yeah, look at how chunky that thing is. So this is D2 tool steel right here. 2.28 inch blade, uh, sheep's foot blade with the stonewash finish. Um, interchangeable black G10 handles that can be swapped out for custom 3D printed scales. And so that, these that, are going to be like, uh, I guess, open source. Yeah, that's um, a trend I'm yeah. really getting behind. I, yeah. I, I'm liking that. Well, everybody likes to customize their stuff. I'm, I'm the same way. Yes. Um, so this one's coming in at, uh, it, it's a full tang, clearly full tang fixed blade. Um, that's a full tang plus. Super junky. Got nice jimping on the back. That's not too aggressive, but... It's decently aggressive. Feels really nice in the hand. Um, really, really dig that. that. That jimping is so close together. It It's not aggressive. You can run your finger across it. You're yeah. getting the grip, but it's not ripping my thumb up. Right, exactly. I mean, that it, and it, yeah. Great big chunky hands, little bitty blade. I could definitely get some force behind that. And, and being able to have a small fixed blade, but you can get a full-handed grip on it. And it's D2. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you're, you're going to be able to use it. You're going to be able to sharpen it. It's not going to be something that is going to go dull after using it twice. Um, that's a good pick. I like it. And you got the, like you've been liking, you've got the uh, jimping on the back end yeah. again for that reverse grip. Yeah. Ever, ever since tour, you picked up that tour. Yeah. That's got that. I've been noticing that more and more. It, it's just an extra detail. It's something that they don't have to do. And how much is that one coming in at? This one's coming in at sixty one fifty six. Ah oh, man. Sixty one fifty six. You, you uh, out cheap me. A Dirk Hoffmeister collaboration that uh, Boker did, and I'm um, I'm digging it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know uh, how you feel about having that pocket clip on the knife itself instead of on the sheath. I think it's very um, interesting. I, I think it is too, and uh, I think that's where the it, trend's going right now. It kind of reminds me of a lot of people carrying their their classic pocket knives in uh, pocket slips now, and yeah, in, in, yeah, in le leather slips and things. So now I I went for an automatic. Um, Knife rights, uh, org, Doug Ritter, always good job. Uh, he was able to help with the new Virginia law, and they ha are now allowed to carry automatics. Mm -hmm. So, KC, who everybody make sure you go take a look at his uh, the opinion. Yep. But uh, KC's finally getting into automatics. He's now allowed to not only have them in his house, but actually carry them. So, I went back to one that we had not too long ago from SMKW Exclusives, the Low Tech. The Low Tech. Now this one is a Boker, it's the Boker Plus Low Tech Falcon SMKW Exclusive Desert Raider. Uh 91.99 under 100 bucks for a great uh out the front automatic. Yeah. Uh we've done several videos on these, so I'm not going to go into m too much detail, but I love the blade shape on that one. Yeah, it's it's like a little understated recurve. I, I, yeah, I dig it, that. I really like it. It fits my meaty paw really well. I can actually get a full grip on it and get my thumb on the back of it. So this is a user, not just a carrier. And that's something for me with uh, automatics that it really has to be a usable blade. And yeah. when I was downstairs earlier, I was taking a look at them. I, I almost went with this or the USB. But again, we've done our uh, exclusive blacked out uh, Boker USB several times. And I've only got to play those in four, four or five times, so I'm gonna have this one on my desk all day long. It's great. Like it, and ooh, ooh, I mean, do the sound, do the sound thing. Yeah, it's got a good ting. And um, I mean, I love the it's construction. A it's a, it's a good ting. It's a good ting. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a phenomenal value. A D2 on the blade steel. Um, under a hundred bucks for a really good, reliable we, OTF auto. We, we both picked Boker for our mids, and I actually wore a Boker hat today. I did not. I did not mean to be the guy that was wearing the hat to the shirt, to the concert, to the place of the people I was going to see. I'm sorry. I, did. I, I have failed you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So you, we tied on to the first. You've got me beat on the second. Yep. But it's time for high end, end picks. picks. You've gone first every other time. Go for it. Go for it. All right. Um, so, for my high end pick, I had to go with the Jedi Master. Your geek came out. I had <clears throat> your your geek came out. <laughs> Knife you must have. Hey, you guys. I'm hey, telling <laughs> I went with the Jedi Master Microtech UTX-85. I like the 85s. Um, they're a great size. Yeah, they're perfect size as far as I'm concerned. And uh, this one allows me to be a nerd, and uh, I really dig it. So um, this one's coming in. UTX-85 Jedi Master Auto features a 3.11-inch CTS-204P blade steel. Now, that is subject to change. Um, it depends on what blade steel, but it's always going to be a premium blade mm -hmm. steel on those. Um, it's just dependent on what's available. Um, uh, blade thickness of 0 0.12 inches. Now, this is a double-edged dagger blade, so not only is it an auto, but it's also a double-edged, so you have to be cautious of where you live and uh, your Again, local laws. Yeah, Check knifewrights.org. And um, this one's got the uh, bronze anodized thumb slide, and uh, locking mechanism, and it's also got the bronze anodized pocket clip as well as glass breaker in the back end, and that's one of the details that I really dig about this. So um, if you look, that's been 
that glass breaker on the end has been kind of jeweled around the outside. Mm-hmm. Just a small little note that adds so much as far as the fit and finish. And that's what I really dig. So, And that's going to be not just on that part, but also on the heads of uh, the machining of the screws. Um, so that's, I mean, fantastic. It's absolutely beautiful. 6061 T6 mm-hmm. aluminum <clears throat> handles um, with, like I said, the bronze anodized hardware. And uh, just love this thing. 4.4 inches closed, 7.51 inches overall, weighs just 3.1 ounces, and right just pops. No, it, it is extremely usable. It is extremely beautiful. And the attention to detail, um, like you were saying, every little piece of it, uh, it just goes to being a grail knife for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, for a good reason, too. And for that kind of attention to detail, mm-hmm. um, it's not that expensive. No, like, no, 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 no. For all the little things that they did with this knife. Um, now, how much was that one? 314. 314. And we've got several Microtechs downstairs that are one offs, one of a kinds, limited editions, numbered, everything that are much more expensive yeah. and much more attention to and detail. So. You'll notice, too, this one's got the serial number right mm-hmm. there, um, it's got the birth date. Right love, there. I love that they include the birthday. Yeah. It's got the uh, Jedi Master symbol right there, along with JM and then the Microtech symbol. Um, yeah, just, uh, I like it. I like it. It's uh, very well done, mm-hmm. very well built. Um, the 85 <laughs> fits my hand really well. Um, I think they need to do like a 25 version and call it uh, Grogu. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's my high. If you do that, I know who's picking one up day of. Don't 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 talk to me. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. And so we tied on first. You beat me on second, but I whooped you on the high end. Did you? I whooped you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. On the high end, I came in at one twenty one fifty three from our good buddy Joe Flowers. Joe Flowers. I've been needing a new machete around the uh, yard because Sam is now getting old enough. He's you know about to turn ten, uh, nine, fourth grade, somewhere up in there. I know I'm getting old. Look at me, that look right there. That, yeah, I had that realization the other day. Yep. And so he's stealing all of my machetes and taking them out in the yard and everything. So I'm going to need a better one, one that I'm not going to let him have. So I was down at Condor earlier. Ha. <laughs> Nice leather sheath. I had, and when I picked this one up, I did not know this was a Joe Flowers design. I did not. This is the Polar uh, North Machete. I like this one. That's beautiful. It's got, it's got the nice rose leaf blade. On it. Oh yeah. Here, I'll hand this to you. I'll do some reading. How's about? Huh. We can't fit it on the screen. It's <laughs> in the Starry Night. Polaris points north to help guide you home, and the Polar North Machete is designed to help you get there. Joe Flowers designed this with point down, the center line for easy point control, a large choil, and multi-grip handle that can be used in many different positions. We've conducted months of tests with this machete and surmised it was an outstanding balance of chopping and clearing capability and a bushcrafter's dream machete. At 2.5 millimeters thick and a blade a little less than 12 inches long, this machete can chop clear, cut, and process all sorts of things the world may throw at you and if, if it's a joe flowers design i guarantee you he did all those things and more that they couldn't actually write about yeah he chased rabbits through the woods with this <laughs> i'm really digging this uh, uh a, the wood handles are really nice um it's a nice thickness it gives just it a slight bit of flexibility but not too much um, making it a great chopper mm-hmm. um and i love the edge on it too that, i love the edge i love that that finger grip, that extra choil up front, being able to grip it. Uh, getting more, like, you can get more precise cuts. Yes. You can get more control right there. I'm working a lot with the blackberry patch this year, and I've got I've got honeyed, uh, oh, what are the flowers? The, uh... Oh, um... Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle, yeah. yeah. I, I've got honeysuckle <laughs> everywhere through the blackberries yeah. this year, and that's what I'm trying to get rid of. And this, with the, with the weight of it, with the precision of it, being able to choke up and really get in there and get it, um, I'm going to have to hire goats to get rid of the kudzu. I'm fine with that. <laughs> but this for doing everything else around the farm, and I'm not letting the kids have this one. This one's, yeah. this one's going to be my treat to myself. I like this. Joe, there you go. Good design. And that's a really, really like nice leather sheath right leather there. Leather sheath with a double clasp on it right there, belt carry all day long. Yeah. Really dig that. So that's, I, that's a nice soft leather sheath. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's very well made. Very well. I like this stuff, and Condor does excellent work. Yeah. I really like it. All right. Well, there's there's one more thing to do. 
And that's show what we're carrying. That is right. Ooh, I so I want to say, first off, um, thanks to Blue Ridge Overland Gear. Uh, they're kind of changing um, how I view my EDC and, and how I go about it, um, primarily because of this uh, – triple run bum bag right here um and that's an interesting way of carrying it now i've been carrying mine as like a uh, man purse kind of like a man purse yeah you've been like uh, it. like an over the shoulder sling here's what i've been doing so mine i've been carrying like this especially if i'm going to like a trade show or something or if i'm spending a day at uh, a theme park mm -hmm. or just gonna be walking around outside a lot um I've gotten to where, especially also if I'm going to be in the car, and like today, um, after we get done with this, I'm actually driving back uh, to Alabama um, to pick up a tractor, and what in God's name are you doing? You can fit everything in here. So um, this has been, uh, especially if I'm going to be in a car for an extended period of time, this is what I've been keeping my wallet in, um, and I also... Um, Good grief. Um, I also have my carry permit, um, so I usually keep my firearm in here. Um, on the outside, I've got it outfitted with um, some patches and stickers. I've got my bra, st bra patch got my bad from, uh, from Bushcraft Kelso. I've got my Woods Monkey patch, and I've got my Mandalorian patch. I've also got my Woods Monkey, uh, small monkey board um, that's got my Eternal uh, Olight mm -hmm. Baton 3. Um, I've got my O pin right here, um, so I've always got a pin with me. I've also got a carabiner in case I need to attach anything. And then and on the a, inside, that one is from uh, Rat Training. Yeah. So that that is a heavy duty carabiner. Yes. Um, it's actually got the weight rating um, in uh, newtons and all that uh, on the back of it. So how many thick newtons does it carry? A lot. So on the inside, um, you can't show that on the air. I can show whatever I want. Um, so I've got my carry right there i've got my keys um i've got my you know car keys Folks, then i've got my other keys you have no idea how many times i have to go running down the stairs Wallet. at the end of the day to take him his keys so, so i appreciate this yeah this this makes a huge difference um also since i'm doing a lot of work like it depends on you know whether i'm here or um riding horses mm -hmm. or working out on the farm i've actually got my um silicone rings mm -hmm. um to replace my wedding band um, because I don't want to get that, you know, scratched up. My wedding band is actually uh, stag along with whiskey barrel and copper. So that one's kind of special to me. So I've got my um, my silicone uh, rings in there. Then not, I've also got my um, Victorinox Huntsman uh, in don't there. Don't rip yours out. One of the things I love about this thing <clears> is <throat> you can rip that out oh, yeah. and put it to the front and then have the things on front of it. Right yeah. There. But yours has got stuff in it, so don't yeah, do that. It, well, I mean, it's, it's fine. But, you know, I've got my, um, you know, there, that. And I've got my Victorinox Huntsman, and I've got my Bluetooth microphone right yeah. there for filming. Um, and uh, also in here, I've got my handy-dandy NAFS Titanium nice. Ruler. NAFS. Nice. Um, that uh, Ben Peterson gave me while we were at Blade Show, mm -hmm. and I've been really digging this thing. That thing's so, coming in. That um, thing is coming so handy. We're going to be carrying uh, a lot of stuff from NAFS uh, coming up very soon. Um, this is going to be one of them, this titanium ruler. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got the angle finder for uh, when you go to sharpen your knives. You can check the angle on uh, the grind of your blade right there and the bevel. Um, so you can be sure to have the right uh, angle when you go to sharpen your knives. I think that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You can also look at the uh, length there. And that ruler's come in handy for me lately because I've been working on the house. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working on, uh, you know, different things as far as plumbing and stuff like that. We've been installing a dishwasher. We've been installing all kinds of stuff. And being able to actually have this with me when I go to and not have to carry, like, a tape measure, not have to carry a whole bunch of other stuff, I can just have this. I've got my ruler in there, and I'm like, hey, I need inch and a half. Let me make sure this is what I need. You've got your straight edge there to make your yeah. cuts, your lines, everything else. Yeah. So for, for it's me, been I've, I've been handy. using this thing with the kids. I've been using this thing with you. If I got to follow you around all day, <laughs> I put extra batteries for every, <clears throat> everything that I uh, need for him in there, uh, and with a small bag like that, and carrying it around my waist. I did not realize how awesome fanny packs in the eighties and nineties oh, were. Oh yeah. Oh my god. But and I remember them when I was a kid that they would rip and they would just be everything would fall out everywhere and then you'd have to carry everything home like this because your bag would rip. This thing's not ripping. I no. like it. 
And for so. me, the, the one knife that I've been carrying in it more than anything else, the Angry Watermelon. <laughs> So that's your EDC for the day. That is my EDC for the that, and I got the little Gerber pry bar, pry tool because, guys, no matter how <clears> many, <throat> no, no matter who tells you, listen closely, a knife is not a pry tool. Carry a pry tool, get one. They're yeah. they're everywhere nowadays. This is a great one for me. Uh, I think it was under twenty. I know me, yeah. I'm cheap. So. Yeah. And this one is the blade replaceable version with the little hobby blade I that pops dig all the way out. I love that. I can do yeah. the different shapes, and I, you can see the scratches on this one. I have beat this one to all heck. So what's your carry for the day besides everything um, you had in the bag? I've got my Finch Lucky 13. Ooh, good one. Yeah. So that's going to be my carry today in the car. I'm looking forward to seeing the 34 come out in those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one's with the white smooth bone. Um, we've still got a few of these left, not many. Um, <clears throat> but that's uh, that's what I've been really digging. Uh, we've had some uh, I love that today. sound. Oh, yeah. That is a good sound. We've had knives today. We've thought of people in the knife community. We've thought of our friends. We've thought of KC. We've thought of all you Virginians out there. Yeah. Welcome to freedom. Finally. <laughs> um, I, I think this was, this was a show. Absolutely. So, folks, talk to us in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have any questions about anything, be sure to send us messages. Um, comment on the videos. We are going through those yes. comments. We are reading our messages daily. So if you need anything, if you're concerned about anything, if uh, something's up and you need a question answered, let us know. Hit us up. If we don't know, we will talk to the people that do know. We, exactly. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. And that's how we avoid real work. Yeah. So remember, if it cuts like a knife Lots or a machete or a hobo, then we carry it. This is not show 25 because we got the last one wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Funny, my fault. All right. Um, all right. Hey, what did Batman say to Robin before they got the Batmobile? What? I don't know. Hey, Robin, get in. Get. All right. Thank you for pausing for this station identification. We are now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Trout. Coping! Will that help me cope with things? I told something so dark and twisted to my uh, therapist the other day. I had to take a moment to think about it. I'm this close to winning therapy. I can feel it. Wow. All right. We're out. Nice. Of our minds. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, but this is a... Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. That. Did you just cut your shirt? Yeah, almost. Okay, let's gently put that back in and we'll take a take two on that. All right. So.